क्लास प्रारंभ किया जाता है हम्म और टुडे आई वुड बी स्पीकिंग ऑन दी आर्ट एंड साइंस ऑफ राइटिंग डिजर्टेशन इन द थर्ड सेमेस्टर एंड इन द फोर्थ सेमेस्टर बोथ द सेमेस्टर दिस पेपर वॉज सपोज टू बी एड्रेस्ड टू बताइए दो मिनट आप कहीं जा रहे हैं क्या दो तीन मिनट कोई बात नहीं हम बोल रहे हैं वो भैया भी हैं वो रिकॉर्ड कर रहे हैं आप भी रिकॉर्ड करिएगा वो भी कर रहे हैं एक आदमी एक और भी भैया भी रिकॉर्ड कर रहे हैं आप भी करिएगा ठीक है तो सो दिस वेरी पेपर इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एज फार एज दोर्स ऑफ हेरिटेज मैनेजमेंट इज कंसर्न एंड because whenever someone gets the degree of heritage management then if suppose someone asks what have you done in the heritage management what can you produce as a result of your doing heritage management then you can simply say that i have studied so many papers about the indian history about museology about tourism about the rules and regulations which are related with heritage management about architecture and the related things about art and the history of the world and also someone who is going to suppose employ you or suppose to engage you will also try to or will also like to know as to what in a very concrete manner you have to justify that you have something like a degree of heritage management i have been impressing upon my students of heritage management that they should choose one of the heritage topics for a detailed study and presentation of the report and in the third semester i had asked my students to select one of the places of varanasi for a detailed study you know varanasi is a heritage city with a continuing heritage history of more than 3000 years or even more than that if suppose if you take the reference of 6th century bc when buddhism rose in india when jainism got spread in india so these ideologies were so much in the past were so distant in the past that from that very distant point in the past to the present if you are going to trace the heritage of varanasi then you will have to deal with the incidence of the spread of the ideas of buddhism and you know very well how when buddha got got enlightenment in gaya he came to varanasi and then in varanasi at a place sarnath he delivered his first lecture we have still the remnants 
the remains the heritage things of that time in sarma preserved and even prior to that if you are going to have something like the vedic civilization the roots of vedic civilization in varanasi or kashi then also you will have to go even back even in the more in, in antiquity in the more past than buddha's times that would be something like the vedic age which the historians they have year marked as something 1200 bc in a very moderate way historians have pointed out an age 12000 bc and they have mentioned about the discovery of iron some historians who are to study the civilization from the perspective of how the technology and how the discovery of material things how helped in the growth of civilization then it is said that the discovery of iron technology and iron particularly in north india north india that led to something like a revolution in agrarian activities in agriculture and that revolution in agrarian activities led to the settled life of the villages how prior to the settled life of villages the people who are living we have from our historians of ancient india that the people who were before the settlement of the villages before the coming of the village life they were like nomads they were like moving from places to places and now if you have to study the evidences of the life prior to the discovery of iron then you will have of course the archaeological evidences some archaeological evidences in the form of certain diggings at particular places done by archaeologists of banaras hindu university first and foremost we may name bridula jaiswal and her student dr vinay kumar who has been teaching you in the heritage management he did some archaeological excavations to find the very ancient roots of the civilization which later on emerged in kashi and in the vicinity he is at present doing archaeological excavations in a village in chandauli called mati gaon and even prior to him there was such an excavation at rajghat at rajghat bridge near kashi station in the 1950s particularly 56 57 there was an excavation under the leadership of professor ak narayan and the excavation site is there preserved and the the findings which were there from rajghat that is very much there in the in the books reporting about the civilization and the culture particularly the material culture of varanasi in something like Uh, not very earlier in the rajghat excavations the 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 period has been given something like 3rd century bc not prior to that so that excavation tells about the the life and the times and the material things so i'm i'm just saying that there are certain pockets there are certain places which a student of heritage management can can choose can select for a detailed study 
and then presentation then and then present in the dissertation form apart from all these things we have varanasi the ganga ji varuna and assi the whole area which is within the surroundings of assi which has been considered as a river in our scriptures and in the historical analysis the material analysis in the past the study of the past of a topography from the view point of the study of the topography of varanasi it is said that varanasi had a sea as a river and ganges river and at the same time varanasi had varuna in the east of varanasi the the ghats are there the banks are there and the banks have been in a very poetic manner described as three mountains the banks of ganges have been described as three mountains the first mountain rising from the confluence of varuna and ganga at rajghat at adikeshav ghat from there the mountain rises and falls at machodari that mountain is called omkareshwar mountain and the second mountain which has been called the vishveshwar mountain which rises from machodari and falls at the present godavariya which has been described as godavari in our scriptures particularly in the kashi khand of skanda puran and from godavariya to assi there is the third mountain there is third hill you may say so these three hills that third hill is called kedar kedar khand or kedar hill so these three hills they constitute what has been in a very poetic manner described as trishul trishul of lord shiva kashi has been described in a poetic manner as an abode as a living place as a place where lord shiva chose to stay and these three hills they were described as tridents trishul and the uppermost hill has been described as vishveshwar and at the top of the vishveshwar hill there is lord vishwanath recently where kashi corridor was constructed and given to the nation on 13th january so united nations organization unesco has also decided to earmark or to recognize the banks of ganges facing ganga ji from assi to rajghat numbering almost 84 to give them recognition as world heritage site so apart from that those who are experts of the study of varanasi they have identified different places as constituting the heritage places like there is a there is something like a reality of panchkoshi 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 which is beginning from dasha shamed and in circling the area of varanasi and then making something like a semi circle again coming to this to to dasha shamed so that panchkoshi has a historical value it has found place in different scriptures and descriptions of different times 
so that panchkroshi can be one of the uh, topics for writing dissertation likewise there are several temples in varanasi which developed with the passage of time although these temples were not so so much mentioned in very ancient books like skand puran of earlier times skand puran is a book having references from 6th century ad to almost 14th century ad different editions are there and as per skand puran the temples and the idols and different uh, religious places which emerged in varanasi they had later origin but even then if someone has to make a study of varanasi from the perspective of heritage one can confine to the study of certain temples like the temple which is still there of 12th century ad that is on the path of panchkroshi near chitaipur that temple has been preserved by the archaeological survey of india one can do something like a study of that and come up with a dissertation likewise there are places particularly the fort of ramnagar is there which is also having a historical importance related with the culture and heritage of varanasi one can confine one's dissertation on rajghat on particularly uh, the the fort of ramnagar so likewise i am just saying that there are different places like the place of ganesh these idols and temples they have been exhaustively described by one sanskrit scholar kuber nas sukul in his book kashi vaibhav if you can have that book and choose something like a particular place or particular uh, idol particular temple for a detailed study and presentation as a heritage dissertation you can do that in the similar way i should also take the name of dina el ek who has written the book varanasi the city of light and there she was something like a disciple of kuberna sukul and she had expressed her indebtedness to kuberna sukul for whatever she had written in that book varanasi the city of light that book she 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 wrote in the beginning of 1983 84 in a very detailed manner about the different heritage places of varanasi something like she had taken an anthropological approach a, a person from uh, an outside the culture group she she is an american us scholar someone a scholar not from within the within india a scholar from an alien land from a different land making a detailed study that is something like a particular objectivity is there in her presentation one more book i would refer of dr moti chand who who has been uh, some, who has been in charge of the archives in bombay and who who, who has been a varanasi native he had also written on varanasi about the detail detailed about different places and locations and the historical origins of different places so you may consult dr moti chand and even before that i would like to mention mr m s sharing m s sharing was a christian missionary who has written so much on not only varanasi but different parts of india even on rajasthan and south india he was head of the church in mirzapur at the time of the 1857 re rebellion or revolution or uprising and he had written a very detailed description of 
the uprising of 1857 and what happened in Varanasi at that time and how he because of the fear of death because of fear of attack how he left Mirzapur in 1857 and made a detailed study of the uprising apart from that I'm just saying that in 1868 M.F. Shering came up with a very good writing that book is available and that he wrote about Varanasi or Banaras, the sacred city of Hindus. That is a very important book, I should say, reporting about Varanasi from, from Sarnath to Assi. In 1868, he chooses or he has chosen to describe different places, temples, ideological orientations, religious orientations about Varanasi. So that is a very exhaustive book one can have while writing on Varanasi. That is a very good book, I should suggest. And even M.S. Shering has written something more I would like to mention here. And his second book about Varanasi is entitled Varanasi, uh, the, the, the Hindu tribes and castes as represented in the region of Varanasi. That is also a very important book and where he discusses and claiming that he is he was discussing the, the, the people of Varanasi. Discussing the people of Varanasi, their caste, the tribes and their orientations, their worldview, their mentalities. That is a very good book and he says that he did field work and also consulted the people and then he came up with the, the book Hindu caste and tribe as represented in the region of Varanasi. I have read that book and in that book he made a very detailed study of the people of Varanasi. They are caste and, and sub castes How there were different castes and sub castes in Varanasi and what were their orientations towards each other and how was something like a hierarchy among the caste. So that is also a very important book. If someone has to make a study or present to make a report about the heritage city of Varanasi, then one may consult uh, M.A. Shering. And apart from that, you have, again, I should mention one European scholar, a British scholar, who was there in Varanasi. He was an essay master. He was in charge of the making of coins, the mint. He was in charge of the mint in Varanasi. His name was James Princep. His book is still there, available. And in 1827-28, he presented Varanasi in the form of drawing by his own hand. That book is very much available and that is something like a mine of informations about Varanasi in 1928. He, he drew the map of Varanasi, all the ghats which he could see at that time from Assi to Rajhat. When he was doing this, then that Malvi bridge, which this, these days you observe, which came into existence in 1898, that bridge was not there in 1878. In 1828, when James Princep was writing his book, Varanasi Illustrated. So from, from that book, it is said that he did the first census of Varanasi. He did census. He calculated the, the number of people in Varanasi. You know, the official census in Varanasi and all over India started from 1871. But uh, he did start 
census in a very scientific manner whatever the scientific manner he had had then he calculated the the, the number of people who were there in varanasi in 1828 and even prior to that you may have something like the paintings of varanasi by some company painters east india company painters who did the painting even prior to james princep that was the painting of 1780 someone did a painting of the ghats of varanasi from the eastern side of ganges that painting is very much available and published and if you see that painting you can have the information about varanasi how varanasi looked in 1780 from the view point of a painter so i just wanted to impress upon that you can choose one of the topics for a detailed study of varanasi heritage and particularly there are different locations like you know at guru at gurudham there is a temple which has been preserved by archaeological survey of india which is not very old but even you know anything which is more than 100 years old is called a heritage thing heritage building so ashtakoni of eight angled temple is there you can take that also as a topic you have in varanasi a heritage building in the name of lal bahadur shastri whose ancestral home is on the eastern side of ganges you can make a detailed study of that so just i mean i'm just uh, asking you impressing upon you that you should choose one of the topics for your dissertation and this dissertation will be very much speaking about you as to what you have done in your heritage management course you have studied the paper but when you come up with a good dissertation then that would be very excellent for you and now last i would like to mention uh, the name of rana pb singh who has been lecturing here rana pb singh is a great authority on varanasi he has chosen to speak on to write on every aspect of varanasi so his books are very much available you can consult him and at the same time if you are confining yourself to the culture and the popular culture of varanasi as a heritage then you can have also one book called culture and power in varanasi culture and power in varanasi came into existence in 1980 it was published in 1980 and the writer is a lady anthropologist named sandria b free tag and in that very book culture and power in varanasi there are several scholars who had contributed to the making of that book and there it has been described how popular culture was there in varanasi in different forms there they mention about the incidents of gazi the the location where someone salar jang someone of the 12th century a muslim warrior how he was killed in bahraich but how in varanasi that salar jang gazi gazi mia how his 
memory is remembered and now the people from both the religious persuasions at the very common level they 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 have veneration for that veneration for the popular culture the hindus and muslims they together they observe the 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 procession of marriage of gazi mia so that is something about the popular culture in varanasi popular culture about the different goddesses we have in our scriptures the description of nine goddesses now durga we have in varanasi you would find the the the, the temples or the idols of nau durga nine goddesses in varanasi is spread from one corner to another then one can choose to write about these uh, idols these temples these religious places in a detailed manner as a heritage study and in the same way uh, there are certain scholars the german scholars they have written about varanasi in the form of visualization how varanasi has been visualized by different people and different persons varanasi has been visualized how varanasi has been visualized one german scholar edited the book gangana jal his name is and he visualized the, the that book is also consisting of several writers they have contributed to that how different locations of varanasi was visualized and given meaning so this visualization is also something like a part of the heritage study and just i'm saying i'm not repeating but i'm saying that how varanasi traditionally has been considered as a place where if someone visits someone have something like a bliss not only bliss but the 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 excellence of knowledge excellence of knowledge the knowledge which is par excellent that par excellent knowledge is given or descends to the to those who visit varanasi and the location where the maximum spiritual energy is generated has been identified as a place where at present kashi corridor came into existence someone may take a dissertation discussing the antiquity of varanasi and also someone may try to answer as to how far the the antiquity or the heritage of varanasi was preserved and what are the things of varanasi to be preserved and what are the things which are later accretions later additions which are not as such the part of the heritage of varanasi the ancient heritage of varanasi how those things because these days people started talking about the heritage of varanasi being destroyed but there are counter discourses also they say that the things which were removed from lord vishnath place to ganges all the stones all those temples all the gods and the images of gods and goddesses which were removed to make something like a place from lord vishnath's main santo sanctorium lord vishnath's temple which was constructed by ahilya bai holkar of indore in 1772 that which is considered as the main chief deity of varanasi which was when constructed about 3000 square feet now the whole area has been cleared and has been given something like a 5 lakh square feet area 5 lakh square feet area has been given and granted to that very sanctum sanctorium the main 
god of varanasi that is lord shiva so that has been said that it is something like some some could say that it was something like doing away with the heritage of varanasi but there were scholars and i should also say that i also take this stand that varanasi has been a place which was constituted of three hills and when we discuss varanasi kashi then in the very ancient the three hills and the island the main central hill was something like an island the central hill which we call vishveshwar was an island where a river from ganges that we call godavari entered into the varanasi or kashi of that time and made a circle of vishveshwar and then again entered into ganges machodari so in the very ancient books particularly in skand purana of ancient editions it is said that vishveshwar is residing at the top of a hill which is something like a like an island surrounded by the river so if you take that very heritage as the starting point then other heritage accretions additions were not something like the chief identity of kashi the chief heritage identity of kashi you can say that the chief heritage identity of kashi would be kashi vishwanath and ganges and the free free access to ganges of those who are visiting from all over india to varanasi from the main deity that is lord vishwanath to ganges and you know that ganges that is as per the vastu shastra as per the vastu shastra vastu shastra is called the sacred architecture of india the thinking about the sacred architecture of india what is the sacred architecture an architecture is called a sacred architecture if it is having a slope from west to the east and if in the east in the slope there is a flowing river from south to north this is not something i am telling from myself this has been written in the ancient books of vastu shastra called samrangan sutra samrangan sutra is an ancient book on vastu shastra and likewise there is another book called mansari mansari and samrangan sutra and in mahabharat also and you have also studied about the sacred architecture and the different locations in an architecture you have studied how different locations in the architecture they have been given some nomenclature how the north east has been given the nomenclature of ishan kon so as per that very sacred architecture the the kashi corridor which came into existence is something very much in consonance with in correspondence with in continuity with the ancient sacred architectural principles the ancient sacred architectural principle says that if a land which is not having ups and downs which is plain in our ancient description a land is considered very very good very much boon giving very much blessings giving a land is called very much enlightening if the land is even without ups and downs so the land in kashi vishwanath is an even land which was constructed even and it has a slope from west to east with an inclination downward inclination towards east and in the east we have the great sacred river ganges which is flowing from south and moving to northwards this moving to northwards ganges that is very excellent and very sacred and very much 
giving what we call moksha ultimate knowledge if someone visits that place as per the ancient understanding one is blessed with the knowledge that is why from all over india from all over world the people gathered from time to time to have a visit to the place where kashi vishwanath was supposed to be there in a very astral form astral form when i use the word astral or in a transcendental form there is a word in english called transcendent in hindi or sanskrit it is called parlaukik lord shiva lives there in a parlaukik way in a transcendental form someone can realize the existence of god only in a transcendental yogic state of mind if one goes into yogic state of mind one can have the 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 realization of lord shiva so that very corridor which came into existence for the for 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 the use of the whole people that was given to the nation on 13th january uh, 2022 that was something like in consonance with the sacred principles of indian architecture so these are some of the topics if someone cho someone chooses for a detailed dissertation then one can say that the, one can justify oneself as one is a, a, a serious student of heritage management when you go in any interview for being a heritage advisor a heritage management student can be a heritage advisor to different companies a heritage management student can can start startups a startup is a concept used by the present government for 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 uh, creating work for getting people more and more engaged in work so heritage management personnel can use the knowledge of heritage management for doing startups and and also becoming something like advisor to the international and national companies engaged in heritage management they can be advisor to the international and national companies who are engaged in the tourist activities you know india being a country of civilization a very ancient civilization a country of the heritage buildings spread all over india from kanyakumari to kashmir and gujarat to assam if you visit india you will find how india is so much full with all the heritage buildings so india is having a potential to world tourism a heritage management trainee a heritage management expert a heritage management post graduate can do a better advisor work to these companies for catering to the needs of those who are willing to come to varanasi or to india you have almost 42 sites which have been declared as the unesco sites in india you have certain natural sites like reserve forests which have been declared as as unesco sites apart from that you have different rivers and locations natural scenes which are there uh, which you can uh, present for the marketing for the marketing of heritage tourism so india is something like a place for market tourism for marketing heritage tourism as you know the most ancient city of rome that has been preserved and conserved no new construction be done in rome likewise in makkah you cannot have more new construction in makkah makkah has been preserved and conserved you cannot stay there more than a particular time two or three days 
then you will have to go back your home so how certain places which are very much important as far as the culture heritage is concerned so likewise varanasi is a place of cultural value recently the high court of allahabad under the leadership of chief justice gave a judgment that in varanasi no new construction be done in the area on both sides of the ganges bank 500 meters from the bank or to be very particular they have said that the ganges highest flood point that is the ganga had in 1978 highest flood point the flood reached to the present uh, lanka of varanasi and to the new colony which we call new colony or ravindpuri colony so there it is prevented new new constructions could not be done and that is something like a responsibility to the to the state government to the central government to the green tribunal to the vda that is development authority so these authorities are to see that how the 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 ganges both banks they remain clean and clear and that is why in the recent budget something related with that the finance minister had proposed that in the 500 meter range on ganges there should be organic agriculture so the organic agriculture would not propel or compel one to go for constructing and destroying the topography or the landscape of ganges so one can choose any of these topics for dissertation and come up with a detailed study of varanasi and because varanasi being the uh, oldest living city of the world living city means sometimes you have rome a very ancient city you have sometimes uh, the greek uh, cities but sometimes you find that the people who practiced those old things they are now no more like you cannot find the people who were having the same mental orientation as the more mental orientation of the people who were like like antony like socrates like the 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 the, 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 the compatriots at that time like nero like the pre christian civilization of europe the pre christian civilizational people of europe you would not find but their remains are there they are preserved as heritage things likewise in india not likewise unlike that in varanasi you have the people who are practicing those things which were practiced by the vedic people who are practicing the things which were practiced by the jains by the buddh buddhist so you have the continuity of the living of the past culture in varanasi in that sense varanasi is a is a city is a living city with a great antiquity and continuity so one can choose any topic for a detailed study of varanasi for dissertation so with these words i i i end my lecture and uh, if someone has any question one is invited to come up with the question please come up with any query any question okay so if you don't have question you can question you can send me your question on whatsapp and this lecture which i have just presented would be on youtube so you may hear it listen to it several times and then come up with your uh, questions 
and the other papers which are there in the fourth semester that related with the preservation of the antiquity that is related with the preservation of the 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 the, the monuments and the old manuscripts so that that we would be discussing and the scholars we have invited they would be discussing about the manuscripts and also about the awareness of our ancient monuments so these three papers the awareness paper the conservation and preservation paper and also the preserve also the conservation and preservation of the manuscripts paper so these three papers scholars should address but uh, today i have just addressed you to impress upon you that you should as i had told you about 6 months back that you should come up with something like good dissertation so uh, i hope you would be concentrating on writing a good dissertation and uh, with these words i i end my lecture here and thank you very much for patient hearing thank uh shri sk tripathi ji thank uh, alok ji and alok ji are you there ji 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 so i thank everyone and with these words <coughs> lecture and i would again be talking to you tomorrow uh, about your queries about your question and answer